Right, well, welcome to part two. What um, this video is going to cover is refitting uh, the clutch to the Unimog 421. You will have seen in the brief video clip of uh, using the Unimog for grading a track that even though uh, it's a quite an old machine, and really I own it as an enthusiast, um, I do use it for quite a few jobs. It's done all sorts of things um, to do with running implements, uh, grading the track, as you've seen, even ploughing, if you look at some of my other videos. Um, when I restored the vehicle, I didn't have the engine out, I didn't replace the clutch, it all worked at that point, which was about a year ago. Um, I've probably put about a thousand miles on it since then, some of that on the road, but some of it um, using it as it was intended. Uh, I suspect the clutch was well worn um, before I even owned it. Um, and probably my thousand miles has, has finished it off, basically. Um, so it was due for replacement. Um, so I'm going through that process now, um, ready to get it back up and running, um, both so I can take it to shows and things, but I can use it um, on our small holding as well. So it's not this little Unimog we're working on, um, although I might do a video about that at some stage. Um, it's the 421 sitting here in bits at the moment. Um, so what are we doing? Well, I had to wait quite a long time to get a new clutch pressure plate. That's what we've got sitting here, this lump. Um, well, I say new, actually it's refurbished um, as an, on an exchange basis, but um, had to go back to um, Belgium. Uh, and then waiting for it to be re, uh, one to become available and then sent back over. So that's all taken quite a while and then I was away. So nothing's happened for a while. Um, initially, I'd, all I've done is ordered the, the clutch plate, but on dismantling, if you look at part one, you'll see that the um, pressure plate on here uh, was badly scored. So uh, it needed overhaul. The flywheel was also badly scored. We'll have a look at that in a bit. Um, so I've had that skimmed. Um, so this pressure plate, the, the 421 was available with a, a single clutch or a dual clutch. This one is a dual clutch. Um, not quite the same as a twin plate clutch that some lorries have to um, increase the amount of torque that the clutch will take without the diameter getting any bigger. Um, in this case, it's a dual plate clutch. One clutch surface, this one, is uh, for the standard transmission, uh, um, ultimately driving the road wheels. But there's a second clutch plate, which we can see the middle of here, which is for the power takeoff. So running the PTO to implements and things on the back of the machine. And it means on a, on a dual clutch, if you press the clutch pedal halfway down, um, it works in the conventional way, like any clutch in a manual vehicle. But if you press it all the way to the floor, it also disconnects the PTO um, plate. So it's common on tractors and things. Um, so you can have your PTO running all the time, even if you're manoeuvring the vehicle, going in and out of reverse, that sort of thing. Um, but as part of the overhaul of this, the um, friction plate, which we can see just sandwiched in there, um, for the PTO become, comes pre-fitted. And it comes also, I don't know if you can see a half washer, my thumb's pointing at it here, if you can get the focus right. But that's just to keep pressure on it because it's already been mounted concentrically, which in theory should mean it will slide onto the input shaft. Okay, so a very large splined hole here in the clutch plate um, for the PTO. And then on the clutch plate for driving the standard transmission, it's much smaller. Um, there's a second shaft that that slides onto. So what we're going to need to do is get this all concentrically mounted on here using a clutch alignment tool and things that will come a little bit later in the process. Uh, and this clutch, compared to um, a more road-going clutch plate, which would have friction lining all the way around, this one has these sort of smaller areas of friction lining, um, which is more suited for heavy, heavy off-road use, or that's the theory. Um, so... Um, what we're going to do is look through the process of fitting it all back in. Before I can get stuck into all of that, what I'm going to do is inside the crankshaft, 
on the back of the engine. This is an OM616, the later engine that was fitted for the, to the Unimog 421. Uh, there's a roller bearing in here, which um, takes a bit of load off the import shaft on the gearbox. Um, I've got a nice new little bearing here, which I'm gonna fit. But to be able to get that bearing out, and there's no access for the back, so I can't tap it out. So I've gone to the expense of buying a um, bearing extractor kit. Um, so we'll have a go with that. Anyway, hopefully what I will be able to do is replace that bearing, then bolt on the now freshly skimmed flywheel. Um, I've got some new uh, flywheel bolts for that. Um, need to check the torque setting for those. Um, then I should be able to put my new clutch plate on, and the clutch plate cover, um, check the settings on that, um, and then hopefully be able to um, start to refit the engine to the chassis. That's the plan. Before I took the flywheel off, I had a good look. I don't know whether the video is going to pick that, this up. I can just about see it. Can you see there's a mark there? Um, and if we look on the flywheel, can you see this? There's a mark just there as well. So that's where our flywheel should be located. So it's uh, in balance. So, next job is putting the flywheel on. So I'm just looking for that mark again. So, new um, bolts are in for holding the flywheel on. They um, should be replaced each time and change it because they can get stretched. And to stop the flywheel turning as I torque these bolts up, I've put a bolt, um, taken the starter motor out and put a bolt back through the other way. And that will um, stop the flywheel turning too far as I tighten it up. So I'm going to torque them up. So clutch plate is on. Um, I've just put in the bolts um, just till they're up snug and check that it's fitting flush and things. Um, and now I'm going to start actually talking it up to the right setting. Well, you can see the engine's rocking around rather a lot um, as I do these bolts up. So uh, before I do any more, I'm going to prop it up a bit more firmly. the right way around you can't really get it too wrong on this this is the wrong way around and you can see that it's not going to hit the flywheel it's got to be that way around so put the clutch alignment tool in and slide it all up together like that okay so there is some play there we're going to have to double check things once we start to fold things up properly
So I've been struggling to get the clutch release mechanism, this part here, um, to be square to the clutch cover. Um, and the adjustment on this is on these levers and ultimately a nut around here. So I took the bell housing off um, so I could adjust them. Now, they are pre-adjusted in the factory, but um, I've actually had the clutch cover off a couple of times and just could not list, get this to come up square. So I've adjusted um, them myself and I'm happy now that things are as they should be. The way I've checked is by working my way around the steel rule across the uh, face of the clutch release and then putting a vernier gauge up against the face of the flywheel and measuring the distance and doing that at several points around the flywheel until I'm, I think that's out of frame, but until I'm basically happy that it's on square. Um, so fortunately the bell housing can come off, so I was able to adjust the bolts here with it in situ. Um, they are crush nuts. You squeeze the end of them so they don't come undone and I've been able to tap them back in position as well. So hopefully when the clutch release bearing is pressed, um, the clutch will uh, be square when it comes away. And the, the, the friction surface will be parallel with the flywheel for both um, transmission clutch and the PTO clutch. We'll see, won't really know until it's all packed together. So I've adjusted these, uh, these worm screws with a locking nut I would adjust the main transmission clutch. Um, and these have been done with a filler gauge. The distance here should be 1.2 millimeters. Um, so they're all adjusted now. So the filler gauge can just slide in and out nicely, all three of them. So that should mean the clutch is all ready to go. The next job is putting the bell housing back on. Well, I didn't video refitting the bell housing, but that's now back on again. Clutch cover is all installed um, and ready to go back uh, into the chassis. Um, I'm gonna leave it here for part two and in part three, um, I'll show you through that process of getting the engine back in. Um, we'll have a quick look at the clutch release mechanism as well and some of the work I did on that. Um, and hopefully we'll get the cab back on and get the vehicle up and running again. That's the plan. See you in the next episode.